Hello everyone, welcome to a very special episode of the CDH cast. Uh, today we have an episode of Greedy Keeps all about Ovar, the all form, uh, another mono blue commander for the ages. Uh, today I have with me Eric, the one of the brewers on a team, a squad of mono blue brewers. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the the Ovar team or your your work? Yeah, on absolutely. This is this has been a really great uh, collaborative effort for me. Uh, I've I've sort of been uh, brewing personal decks for a while, and uh, this is the first time I've gotten to uh, put my list out there and and work with a a team of people. Uh, so I've gotten a ton of help from. Uh, Ben Hire from uh, you from uh, a number of people uh, that's really taken this deck from uh, where it started, which was uh, a weird meme on Flickr uh, on Filter Angie in Mono Blue to sort of a non-deterministic combo deck with a lot of interesting lines. Yeah, I think uh, one of the more interesting uh, things about the deck is obviously the uh, coveted jewel line. So we have like a little slide here, so people we'll get people can get a look at that. Um, we have Ovar the All Form. I'll, I'll read them real quick. It's a legendary creature shapeshifter for three and a blue. It's a changeling, so it has all creature types, which uh, does come up. <laughs> Sometimes there are cards in this deck that do care about that. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, if it targets Absolutely. one or more permanents, you control you create a token that's a copy of one of those permanents. So let's say you have a uh, an island in play, and you play an instant or sorcery that targets an island, you get another island. If you have a spell seeker in play, you get another spell seeker. If you have a dock side in play, you get another dock side. Uh, even if you have a phantasm image that's a copy of something, you'll still get the, I guess, yeah, you can stack the trigger. So yeah, you'll get, you can stack the trigger. Yeah, yep. so you'll get a copy. Uh, actually, I don't even know if it matters if you stack the triggers, but... Actually, it's probably it, it does, right? Because uh, you're using a lot of uh, buyback stuff, so sometimes yeah. you do care if the spell. I'm just thinking, like, I guess, like, if you had like a Phyrexian Delver that was a spell, I guess, you know, what I mean, like a or a Karmic Guide, right? You could probably stack the triggers. It, it wouldn't matter, but uh, anyway. Uh, and it says, whenever a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard a card, you create a token. Uh, sorry, discard this card. You create a token that's a copy of target permanent. I know we mentioned at one point playing a. Uh, not command tower command beacon are you still on command beacon command beacon i'm absolutely still on command beacon. oh my uh, god and, you know, we're we're on uh we're, we're also on uh candelabra of tanos so there are definitely some spicy <laughs> reactions to uh wheels so if you really want a copy of like a tavesh or something yeah so just for those curious uh the reason command beacon is hilarious is if ovar's in your command zone and you have an untapped command beacon in play and someone casts a wheel fortune you can just crack your command beacon to put your ovar into your hand and then discard it putting it back into the command zone and uh you just get a, a copy of the mana crypt they use to cast uh, the spell or one of their lands or, or something. I, I'm not sure if you have to control it. Uh, yeah, target permanent. You do not oh have to control it. Target that's permanent. Awesome. You get anything you want. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty silly. So we also have two cards here that are, I'd say, core to the deck. Would you Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So we have Whim of Volrath. It's a blue for an instant. has buyback two, so you can pay two mana to put it back in your hand as it resolves. Change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word or basic land type with another until the end of turn. So um, the real reason this is here is it's one mana target a permanent, and then you can put it back in your hand for two. So why is that good? Well, for example, if you have a high tide out and you've cast your high tide enough times, you can just keep making islands. If you've cast four high tides somehow, you could, you know, Wim of Volrath, tap the island for four mana. Wim of Volrath, get a new island, tap that for four mana. Something like that. The real juice, though, is with Coveted Jewel. Coveted Jewel is a six mana artifact that says when it enters the battlefield, you draw three cards. Then it taps for three mana of any one color. You know, that's how much it costs to cast Wim of Volrath. And then it has some really bad text. Uh, whenever one or more creatures and opponent controls attack you and aren't blocked, that player draws three cards and gains control of Coveted Jewel. So, and they untap and it. And they get to untap it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's brutal. You really don't want to pass the turn with a Coveted yeah. Jewel in play. So the crazy thing about Coveted Jewel, though, is that if you have a Wim of Wrath and a Coveted Jewel in play and Ovar in play, you can draw your whole deck and make quite a bit of mana uh, because you have a lot of cost reducers and 
you know, effects that make it so you make extra mana. So uh, this is like a core combo to the deck. And there's actually, we have a little thing here. There's actually a spell seeker line that assembles this combo. Uh, you need four islands, a mana crypt, Ovar in play, and the spell seeker in your hand. And 14 steps later, you will win the game. Um, well, 14 steps later, you're in a position to win the game. Sure. Uh, you you can go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's horribly complicated. We are not. We don't have time for that in Greedy Hughes. But uh, congrats to Ben and you and uh, a whole bunch of other people in the community for working that out and figuring out how that all works. So now yeah. we are ready for the Greedy Keeps. We are ready to, uh, you know, start doing some mulliganing. Do you have any before? Right before we get started, do you have any any uh, advice? What what are we looking for in these Greedy Keeps? So. What I'm what I'm looking for is uh, one of two things. Uh, preferably, I'd like to get Orvar out quickly. Uh, from there, there's so much stuff in the deck that targets just a permanent that I can try and generate value by, you know, putting in a bunch of creatures that do something, or uh, you know, copying my even my islands to generate a bunch of mana advantage. So I'm just looking for a, a fast Orvar so that I can start rebuilding my hand from whatever I needed to spend to cast him. Uh, or I'm looking for some sort of quick draw engine. Uh, so like a, a Ristic Study or a Mystic Remora, uh, because they, they start gaining a lot of value if you can start copying them with Orvar. Uh, one Ristic Study is frustrating to deal with, three Ristic Studies is... <laughs> Uh, almost impossible for your opponents to beat. Yeah, that's pretty insane, actually. Uh, I had not considered the grind potential of just having many mana crypts. So let's look at our first hand. We're, we're going to do we're going to do a few here. Uh, so snow covered island, reality spasm, windfall, cyclonic rift, mystic reflection, sapphire medallion, mental misstep. Not a lot of acceleration here. Not a lot of uh, any reason to keep this hand right. No, ab absolutely not. All right, this second is... seven. Uh, we have a, a Dream's Grip. A lot of cards I'm not familiar with here. Force of Will, Mystic Reflection, Gilded Lotus, Force of Negation, Mox Opal, Snow Covered Island. I'd say the same here, right? Absolutely, yeah. You you're, you draw some awkward-looking hands in this deck because you've got your you know your Dream's Grip effects, which are really good with Orvar in play and sort of struggle before Orvar is in play. That's, that's one of the key reasons we're looking for a, a fast Orvar. All right, so now we have City of Traders, Force of Vigation, Merchant Scrolls, Snow-Covered Island, Snow-Covered Island, Snow-Covered Island, Dream Script. Uh, this is more attractive, right? Yeah, this is this is a pretty attractive hand. At the absolute worst, we're casting a uh, turn three Orvar. We have a little bit of interaction that we can keep up. The, the Merchant Scroll looks very important, but uh, we're actually okay pitching it to a Force of Negation here. If we need to, it's not required for any of our, our lines. It just sort of accelerates us to... To getting there and this dream script means that any permanent that we put in play because it says tap or untap target permanent rather than listing types anything we draw we can make a copy of to start generating value and, so this is actually a, a more attractive hand yeah and uh it kind of noted i think it's kind of notable uh it, with the city of traders um you can actually copy the city of traders with dream script uh, I'm not sure what the yeah, Oracle yeah. text is. Yeah, City of Traders is. says that uh, when you play a land, you sacrifice it, not when a land enters the battlefield. Yeah, so if we are, instead of playing lands, copying our lands that are already in play, we're not sacrificing that City of Traders. Yeah, the only problem is then you have to sacrifice multiple lands if you play a land, but uh, just something to think about like when you're trying to go off, right, is that maybe you wait until turn three to play the City of Traders, play the Merchant Scroll on turn two, and then... You on turn three can use the city of traders multiple times or something, just like something to think about. Race yeah, colorless forward. mana is is in general less useful than than blue mana. Uh, often I'd rather have you than two. Okay. Uh, but uh, a big part of the thirteen step process that you showed earlier is finding a way to get a high tide going, and city of traders sort of does that for free if we are looking to cast our. Uh, artifacts for acceleration yeah so so would you keep this i would i would uh i would keep this on a on a second seven this is our six uh or or on a six i would absolutely keep this throwing throwing back an island okay um i wouldn't keep this on a first seven but other than that i would okay 
All right, let's get a fresh seven. Cataxian probe, treachery. Treachery is you love to see it. <laughs> Polluted true. Delta, Spell Seeker, Twiddle, Candelabra of Tanos, and Stab. A lot of land untapping here we see, right? There is absolutely a lot of land untapping, and that's because with, with Orvar in play, that Twiddle, uh, it doesn't just untap its land and add to Storm Count. It will uh, also put another island into play. Uh, or, you know, if we've got our high tide, we can put another Candelabra of Tanos into play and untap it to start making a ton of mana. So um, this is unfortunately, a... we're not really starting from anywhere. Yeah. The Spellseekers which, uh, are part of a one-card combo, tough. but it actually requires quite a lot of things to have happened. So you can't, you don't even really want to see it in that starting hand. Um, right. So. Right. Yeah, I would, I would personally ship this back, but uh, it does have a lot of things that we're interested in. Yeah. Snow-Covered Island, Ghostly Flicker, Force of Will, Merchant Scroll, Mana Vault, and Snow-Covered Island, Snow-Covered Island. This looks a lot better, right? This is what we're lo this is what we're looking for. This is uh, this is exactly the kind of hand we want to see. This is casting a turn to Orvar with Force of Will protection. Uh, we've got Ghostly Flicker, which can target two permanents. Notably, Orvar's trigger doesn't copy all of the permanents that you target. You have to pick one, uh, but it still gives you an untap for like our Mana Vault or an Island. So, yeah, I mean, you, you know, get two could, islands. We could and untap a... our mana vault and put another mana vault into play to have yeah. six mana available, or we can start copying islands. Um, I mean, yeah, you could is, you could just like excellent. untap your mana vault, make two islands, or untap an island and make an island. That's like pretty good, right? Yeah. So that, yeah. that's pretty sick. All right, and what do you merchant scroll for? Uh, so there are a number of things that you could merchant scroll for here. Uh, if we draw a fetch land, Aquatex Will is actually a really interesting card because uh, we run a Mystic Sanctuary. And Aquatex Will on Mystic Sanctuary makes us a new Mystic Sanctuary. The Orvar trigger resolves before the Aquatex Will does. Uh, Aquatex Will, uh, sorry, is uh, puts a flood counter on target island, which makes it target land, which makes it an island as long as it has the flood counter. And draws a card if you control a Merfolk. Orvar is a Merfolk, so we'll draw a card. That Changeling comes up. Yeah. Uh, and because Orvar's trigger happens on cast, we put the Mystic Sanctuary into play first and then get to resolve that trigger, putting something from our graveyard on top oh. of our library, and then draw it off of the draw from Aquatex. So World. it's like a regrowth. So it's a regrowth that is free because we don't have to pay any mana. That's really good. Uh, so if, we, if we've got a fetch land, we're probably going for that to rebuy the Merchant Scroll and put an extra land into play. Um, if not, we can go and get uh, Hidden Strings, which is one of the weirder, excellent cards in the deck. It's uh, one and a blue for a sorcery, which is tap or untap target permanent, then tap or untap another target permanent. And then it has Cypher. So... Even with just two islands in play and Orvar, we can cast it to untap our two islands and put another island into play, cipher it onto Orvar, attack, untap two islands and put another island into play, just making it a huge ritual. That's pretty sick. All right. Uh, one sec. Let's uh, get a fresh hand. Force of Will, Mystical Tutor, Flood Strand, Archaeomancer, Dizzy Spell, Whim of Volrath, and Hole Breacher. Uh, this one's pretty low yeah, on mana, right? Yeah, there's a lot of things we're happy to see, but just not enough mana to want to keep it. All right, second seven. Clock Spinning, which is an awesome card. Snow-Covered Island, Windfall, Ancient Tomb, Snow-Covered Island, Arcane Signet, Sakura. I actually really like this one. I really like this one as well. We probably uh, take two damage and put an Ancient uh, an ancient Signet, Arcane Signet, off of Ancient Tomb into play on, on turn one and cast uh, turn two Orvar. But uh, and then if things three. are going south, we have that windfall as backup, or we have clock spinning, which is a lot like Whim of Volrath, except the buyback is is one yeah. more. Yeah. So we need to do a little extra work to it, make it it's really go. It's still different, like but pay it for generating a ton of value. It's still yep. pay for man to put an ancient tomb into play, right? Yep. Like that's insane, <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's which maybe it pays for and the ancient tomb taps to do it again. So it's it, that's crazy. It's basically pay two mana. Yeah, that, that's. That, that actually brings up sort of an interesting uh, point about this deck. Since you're copying so many permanents, 
uh, you know, you're not in black, you're not running ad nauseum, you're not going to be an initial target for people to attack, but as you start putting multiple ancient tombs or multiple mana crypts or multiple tapped mana vaults into play, suddenly you start uh, hurting yourself a little bit and, you know, you become a, a more attractive target to, uh, you know, catch stray attacks. Yeah. So that's something to think about a little bit, but not enough that I would throw back this hand. This is, yeah, this this is great. great. All right, let's get a fresh sun. Ghostly Flicker, Mana Crypt, Snow Covered oh. Island, Mox Diamond, <laughs> Snow Covered Island, Snow Covered Island, Mystic Reflection. This hand's sick. This hand is this hand is nuts. Yeah. Um, You're just missing. You, this, like, is, this is a turn one. This is a turn one Orvar with Ghostly Flicker on turn two. Yeah, and uh, the Mystic Reflection is actually really sick too because it, it actually lets you like if someone has a good creature in play that you want uh, like multiple copies of, uh, th that Mystic Reflection at least lets you like. If you hit any creature off the top or any anything like that, you can at least pick the best thing you want a copy of, which is kind of sick. Mm -hmm. um, and if we hit a creature that we want to keep, we can cast a Mystic Reflection, and it says target creature, which is the only part we care about. Yeah. Uh, so we can we can hold it up as, say we don't want a Dockside to come into play under our opponent's control, we can hold it up as target our own creature to counter their Dockside and, and get give another us a copy. copy. We're getting yeah. a lot of value out of that card. Yeah, yeah. and then you can, like, Ghostly Flicker... <laughs> <laughs> do it again. Yeah. Fuck your whatever uh, creature you want to do. So yeah, this hand's really dependent on the top deck, but it says so much acceleration. If your opponents play any wheels or you top deck any good cards at all, you're you're really well off. Yeah. So this is sick. Fresh seven. Uh, we're just gonna call it a no lander. Let's go to second seven. Time spiral, snow covered island, bribery, barrel, uh, essence flux, which is sick. Snow covered island and mana vault. I love this hand. I love it. I, I love this hand as well. Depending on the, the table we're at, this could be bribery for Dockside Extortionist. On turn two. And then on on turn two. And then you can Essence and, Flux uh, it. So you can't Essence Flux says put it back into play. Oh, under you're right. Its you're own, right. Under its owner's control. You're right. Uh, but uh, we can we can pretty quickly start casting this Time Spiral or get Orvar into play. Yeah. Or, I think what you, you know, whatever we want. I think to do. what you do is you go. Turn one, Mana Vault. Turn two, Baral. Turn three, uh, you Bribery for like a Dockside. And then play uh, the Time Spiral. I think that's probably what you do. Uh, yeah, that, that'll, that'll depend on how aggressive people are, are being with their artifacts and enchantments. But uh, in, in general, that's that's about the, the timeline you're looking at. Also, uh, you're okay waiting a little bit to cast your Orvar here since you're not copying anything right away. And also, a really cool thing about Time Spiral in this deck is you actually can ramp your lands, which most decks can't really do. A lot of decks are dependent on, uh, you know, they're like dorks. This deck, because it can copy your, you can copy your lands, you actually do often have a way to, like, untap six lands with Time Spiral, which is awesome. So Yeah, I've, I've definitely had uh, turn twos where I untap six lands with my Time Spiral. That's, so, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Uh, fresh Hand. Narset, part of Veils, Bribery. Bribery is one of my favorite cards, if people don't know. So every time I see a Bribery, I'm really happy. Scalding Tarn, Brainstorm, Dream's Grip, Vidalcan, Aether Mage, which is actually a really interesting card. Um, I, do you ever copy your Ovar, with, or does it say Other? Is that, I, so Orvar says Other, but we're running Sakashima so that we can copy our Orvar. Just oh, in case. that's really nice. Okay. Yeah, because uh, once once you've got two copies every time you cast a spell, suddenly paying one blue to untap an island and make two islands seems just absolutely nuts. Yeah, and then we have an ancient tomb. This hand seems good. It has some acceleration. The dream strip is a ritual, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, because it just untaps your ancient tomb. Yep. Uh, yep. You're you're low on blue mana for the bribery. Uh, you can always yeah, we, we're sort of, for we're sort of going to live and die by this brainstorm here. Yeah, I think but, so. Too. Uh, even if our brainstorm is bad on turn one, we can, you can play shuffle. ancient tomb and spell cycle. Yeah, wizard cycle the Vidalcan information to shuffle. Yeah, that's true. And then you have a spell um, seeker, which you can't really complain about. Right. And if if we don't have to do that, we can hold on to Vidalcan Aether Mage as a uh, bounce target sliver, which includes Orvar if we need to protect him from some form of removal. Yeah. All right. A uh, fresh seven. Soul Ring, Hole Breacher, Repeal, Chrome Box, Narset, Parter Veils, Archimancer, Essence Flux. I'm kind of tempted to keep this, uh, to be honest. 
like uh yeah i i keep this as well um you know it's we don't have island uh we wish we had island if we draw island we're playing turn one whole breacher and that's just that's just a reality of the format that's just good yeah i think um, even though even then like a turn two whole breacher is fine in this deck yeah absolutely you just need mana if, you, if someone if yeah. someone plays a crom or a tevish thought you just flash it in steal their one or two draws and then um yeah you have the mana now to play Ovar. Yeah, and uh, you know we've got Repeal, which is sort of a, a neat trick with Orvar in play. It makes a copy without Orvar in play. We can, you know, do some bounce stuff with our Soul Ring to draw some extra cards hmm. to, yeah. to try and hit that blue. Interesting. All right. Let's just do one more. Snow-Covered All Island, right. Fierce Guardianships, Hidden Strings, Mox Opal, Gitax and Probe Ancient. Uh, sorry, Gitax and Probe, Arcane Signet, Snow-Covered Island. I actually like this one. Um, I do as well. This is sort of right on the edge for me. Uh, I'd really like to hit another artifact to turn on the, the Mox Opal. But uh, we've got some information about our opponent's hand with the Gitaxian Probe. We've got you know, some stuff to ramp into uh, cards with our, our Hidden Strings. And we've got Pierce Guardianship for some protection. So. Hidden Strings is so good. You know, if... It's mm-hmm. so good in this deck. Two copies. I really wish it were an instant, but uh, oh, it's, it'd be, bu- it's it'd be great busted. as a sorcery. It'd be too good. Even, yeah, even but... actually, do I have it? I actually, incredibly enough, I got sent a Hidden Strings in the mail as like a free card. I couldn't believe it. I love this card. Hidden Strings is great. It's, it's, so. a, it's a sign. you got to build Orvar. But there uh, is an instant version of Hidden Strings uh, called Toils of Night and Day from Kamigawa. But uh, I think it's it's sort of the... 108th card in Orvar right now, unfortunately. It doesn't have Cypher. Right. All right. So that is the end of our Greedy Keeps for now. Do you have any any comments on the list you'd like to you'd like to add? Uh, just that uh, it's, it's really flexible, obviously. When you're doing non-deterministic mono-blue combos, there are a lot of different directions you can go. Uh, I'm sort of light on the X draw spells. Uh, I know that... Uh, Mike from uh, playing with power. From playing with power is on more of those, as is uh, Fyrif, and uh, we've discussed some of the uh, pros and cons of those. Um, they're happier with them than than I am, but I like. I think uh, like at least pull from tomorrow. Oh yeah, I'm I'm on pull from tomorrow because you can get it off of Spellseeker. Yeah, I think that's probably and off of Merchant Scroll. That's probably all I need to be but, on. But uh, it's it's a flexible list, and there's a lot of room for for changes and tailoring. Yeah, it's also pretty unexplored, right? Like uh, t- you discovered the Spellseeker line today. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally an hour before recording this episode, I was in Discord with with Ben, puzzling out that line. Um, it's it's a a bit of a big change. That's sick, though. I I I really like the deck. If you're checking this video out, and it isn't uh you know, like the first week in February. Um, you should uh, check out the list, see what changes have been made. I'm sure there's going to be an updated primer. Uh, you mentioned working on one. So yeah, yep. I, this list is really cool. Uh, it's definitely better than I think people really anticipated it to be. Uh, I remember the first time I saw it, even, I was like, even me. Yeah. yeah, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, this is a pretty good meme. And then I watched it play, and I was like, yeah, this is a pretty good meme. <laughs> this is a real good meme. Yeah. So. And it's it's come a long way from there. I think the first pile that anyone saw was all of the instants that were a blue said target creature and drew a card just to to try and filter off of uh, pester mites. And, yeah, the uh, pester mites. We've, we've figured out a lot of much better lines since then. And again, that's with the help of so many people. Yeah, and I think Ovar is also just kind of people are excited about. It's really cool and unique. And uh, yeah, so... Thanks for coming on, Eric. Uh, thanks for showing off your list. Uh, I forgot to mention the video beginning of the video, but uh, my microphone died, so I'm sorry if my audio quality was garbage, everyone. Uh, not much I could do about that, getting it fixed. So thanks, thanks for coming on again, Eric. Really, really do appreciate it. And I hope everyone yeah, checks absolutely. out. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, I hope everyone checks out all the links and stuff in the description. There will be a link to the deck list, and if there's a Discord or anything like that, I'll make sure to include that if it's available. So have a good one. Thank you again, Eric, and uh, stay safe. See you.